Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 1. Last time we recruited Momo and this time we've got her, well, somewhat leveled up at least. Now, in the battles that I was doing off screen, I did manage to get her a little fo more forward. Not as much as I would have liked, but uh, the experience is just too small with two characters now splitting it between them. As you can see, she wields a, wields a rod. Blah, I can speak. And it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. She has very low strength. And she also has really low defense, which is why everything she has gives her more defense. That being said, we want to make sure that we keep her protected, which is why she's in the back row behind uh, Ziggurat there. And skills. What I did off or when I was battling off screen, I got enough to get her poison guard, which is all she needs. Uh, you don't need the uh, search eyes on any more than just the one character. Now, we also got enough tech points here to upgrade uh, speed on Cyberkick, which I will be doing. It's not necessarily the best. Uh, we won't be using a lot of Cyberkick in the future, but, uh, you know, it's worthwhile just for this section alone. It just makes things so much easier. Make sure you uh, set that. Now, Momo doesn't have anything on her far slot at this point. In fact, she has Star Strike on two of them, and Star Strike is probably the worst tech in the entire game. Now, techs aren't really just, you know, either good or bad in this game. They're good or bad based on what elements they use or what types of attacks. In this case, Slash is always better than Hit. There's very, There are very few enemies that are weak to Hit type damage, and so we're going to want to get rid of that if at all possible. So I'm going to put uh, Floral Tempest on this one. I will leave this here just in case I want to use it in a specific fight. Uh, we don't have enough points with you yet, but once we do, we'll be putting Floral Tempest on the near slot there. In the meantime, let's just uh, show one more battle here with these guys. We'll stop that stupid alarming. And this is kind of how the process goes with her in the back row now. She guards. Ziggurat takes out them with, uh, well, now he can use uh, his kick, but in the meantime, I had been using Lightning Fist. It gives him enough damage to take out pretty much any enemy in one round without having to guard, without having to save uh, SP or AP or whatever it is. And so that's pretty much how I've been doing it. Now, if you don't have Momo enough points to get, uh, oh, what is it, uh, the poison protection there. You can just use a, an antidote in battle. We've got more than enough of them from fighting these enemies now. Uh, so have her guard again. Luckily, we've got you on uh, an, a special slot there, so we get some more points. That's always good. Yeah, using these is usually way more effective than just trying to fight normally. Uh, let's guard with you real quick. Chances are she'll get to go again. Maybe? No. Okay. So, I could wait and get him on a spot, but I'm lazy, so let's just kill him right now. Let's go. Yeah. Having his uh, text to deal more damage makes him far more useful uh, in this area. And specifically going to be useful upcoming, because we're going to... Uh, he was going to say oneself, but uh, it's going to make life a lot easier in some of the upcoming battles here. Now, so now that we've done that, let's head up here and head this way. Now, the enemy over there is actually defeatable at this stage now that we have Momo. Momo is kind of the key for this. Before doing that, though, we need to work on our ether skills. Let's use some ether points and evolve my guard, specifically into bodyguard. And we also want to evolve it into recharge because both are very valuable skills. And now let's set both of those. Those will be necessary in order to do anything in the upcoming fight. Without them, you're pretty much hosed. So, uh, just, there we go. And we'll enter this fight. Now, 
this guy is a machine, obviously. She has something called Sheep Beam, puts mechanical enemy pilots to sleep. And yeah. That puts him to sleep, and now he can't do anything. So, I'm gonna go for Bodyguard. Now, the reason why I didn't get this skill any time before was because it specifically spoils Momo's name before we even got her. You can learn this skill before you even get, uh, you know, her as a character. So anyway, increase the strength and defense if Momo's behind. Basically, this skill is useful here in this area and then never again. So it's kind of a wasted skill, but at least it has a purpose at this point. Uh, Momo will be here to uh, heal if uh, the need should arise. Uh, this guy, even though he's a machine, he's not really weak to lightning. So we're going to go with Cyra Kick here. Let's go. It does quite a bit more damage, so... And as soon as you hit the guy, he will wake up, and he'll be ready to come and try and kick your ass. Which means he's going to get a hit in, and he missed. But he does a lot of damage, and you're really not supposed to try and beat him, you know, one up without strategy. Basically, Sheep Beam is your way of uh, getting through this fight. And so, yeah, let's just go and see if we can take him down. Hopefully we get a critical. I would like to get the additional points for this fight. That would be very much appreciated. He also has what's called Absolute Defense in the guide that I'm looking at. I'm not sure if that's what it's called in-game or not, but uh, he basically goes into a defensive pose and takes no damage from the first uh, attack that you deal to him and minimal damage from all subsequent attacks in that uh, turn. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Uh, beat him full off, but we'll see. Probably not. Let's go. If I get lucky, all much so much the better. No, I didn't. So we'll have to wait for another round. He didn't use absolute defense, but he does do a lot of damage as you can see. Uh, let's go ether and sheep beam and I'm going to have I'm going to boost Siggy here and then hope that it's his turn next. It's not. Damn it, I screwed it up. <laughs> okay, uh, what I'm gonna do now then is I'm gonna move Momo out here and I'm gonna guard again, and I'm gonna guard again. And so it's likely going to be her turn next. And I'm just wondering whether I should uh, damage him a little bit, which I probably should. So there we go. We've weakened him down. It's Momo's turn. I'm going to use Triangle, Square, and Floral Tempest. And I may not even be able to kill him with it. But at least Siggy has enough uh, on his boost gauge to get back to a good point. Did I get him? There we go. He has an anti-lightning shield, I, I guess. Maybe you have to use slash attacks to get rid of it. I'm not sure. Eh, times two. Better than nothing, I guess. Most importantly, we get Decoder 4. And that's pretty much it for over there. Now, if we pop up here... Slowly. We can try and go the way that uh, we came in, which obviously would be the way we should run away. Well, that's nice. Okay, not so nice. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be going this way. We're going to have to head back. And logically, they actually have a good plan. They block the normal escape. Makes sense. Anyway, now we need to backtrack to the room with the shiny red button from last time, so I'll do that off screen. Okay, as soon as you go to open this door, uh, the soldiers think they've found where we're going, and a new cutscene begins. Just figured I'd do that off screen. I did fight the two enemies on the way back and managed to level Momo up one more time, so that's going to be helpful in the future. And we're going to stay hidden for the moment. Are you a military realian? No, 
an ex-human. Ex-human? A cyborg. An ancient relic. So it seems. I registered as an organ donor without giving it much thought, and they resurrected me after my death. That infamous Life Recycling Act, right? Yeah. The Species Preservation Act came about thanks to the mess that old law caused. Hmm. Um, you still haven't told me your name. It's Ziggurat. Eight. Ziggurat? Eight? You're a real human, but your name sounds more like a model number. Oh I well. Know. How about I call you Ziggy instead? Z I G G Y. It's short for Ziggurat. <sighs> and we get a flashback. <laughs> Why? you a real one if I could, but I just couldn't get one. Oh no, it's great, Dad. He's so cute. I guess it's uh, like a fake dog hey, or something. Dad, what's his name? Did you give him one yet? Nexus 6. That's just his model number, isn't it? That makes him sound like a robot. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I know. How about next? It's short for Nexus 6. What do you think? Huh, Dad? Yeah. That's a great name. Really? Come on, Nex. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, boys. <laughs> ah, so we got flashbacks to his own life. And the kid fell down right away. <laughs> do you think it sounds like a puppy's name? I'm not sure how she read into that. Because no. I don't believe she experienced Call me whatever it. whatever you want. Okay, then Ziggy it is. He'll sound a lot more human now. Well, looks like they're gone. With that cutscene, we now have a new name for our uh, new kind of hero. Ziggy! He gets renamed that. Though, if you go in and check out his, um, his equipions... Look down at the bottom left, it says Ziggy's Beam Pod. It always said Ziggy's Beam Pod, even when I was hovering over it in like the last episode. So I didn't point it out for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, they changed his name and everything else was already set up to uh, exploit that. Now, uh, we're pretty much healed up and set up to move forward. So what we need to do is we need to hit this guy here. Now, the segment decoder 4 that we got before is uh, usable at the segment address that we found here. That opens this, obviously. And uh, But we have all those guards blocking the area now, so we can't go and get it at this point. And we have another cutscene. There's a lot of these. Commander, the intruder is after the 100 series. Really? Probably one of the government's dogs. The intruder disappeared from our sensors near D-Block. All units are currently patrolling the area. Surround D-Block. We'll fence them in from both sides. Yes, sir. Well, looks like we're kind of screwed. Hopefully our strategy of escaping down these stairs isn't uh, leading into a trap. That would be no fun. And this guy sends the little guys after us. And this should look familiar to anyone who played Xenogears. Yes, they put this entire sequence back in the game, which is just hilarious to me. And there's some items around here. Some of them can eat items anyway. There's a warning. They are chasing after us. They're just very slow in this game. So we get a med kit, and we do want to go up through here for sure, because this will get us more items. And this is the item that we saw a while ago, an ether upgrade scene. Very nice. And over here, we get some ether packs. Yay! At least ether packs are useful. I have been using them. And an ether pack S. 
And that's all we can get in there. Yeah, they pretty much lifted this entire sequence right off of Xenogears. Which is kind of funny. Now, here, if you fall down, you kind of get screwed. I don't know why they're not chasing me yet, but... Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, like I was saying, if you fall down there, you got to climb up the ladder. The enemies can't get at you when you're uh, on the ladder, but if you walk directly over top of these, you can get there. For some reason, yeah, there we go. They're chasing after me again now. I do want to actually fight them, so that's uh, why I went back for them. So yeah, if you walk across properly, then you don't fall down and it uh, you don't get stuck. That uh, slime stuff slows you down. So we can go like that. Usually they catch up with me by now. There's also that long one there if you're uh, really good at it. I, of course, am not very good at it. So let's open up this, get ourselves another ether pack, and then I'll fight these couple of guys once they show up here. Yeah, and there's the ladder. So I'll fight these two guys off screen and I will see you in a moment. Assuming they will actually come after me instead of, you know, sitting on their asses. Oh, there's even more coming in behind. Oh, they actually have a new enemy, so I might as well show off at least one of the battles. Um, uh, Ziggy should be able to one-shot any of these guys. It was really hard trying to not say his name up until now because that's how he's known for the rest of the game. But uh, we managed her. All right, so these are Utix Soldier X. Not sure if that is all that important, but uh, I can almost one-shot them with a critical. But yeah, we'll just take these guys down one at a time, just like before. Uh, the flying guys are the same as they were in the little mini-boss fight there uh, that we fought with Ziggy. And they don't deal nearly enough as much damage as most of the other enemies. The other enemies that uh, get paired with these guys are the uh, cyber crabs or whatever they are. Do I get a turn? Do I get a turn? Of course, Momo gets a turn. Um, so I'm going to move Momo out here because she can actually take down some of the enemies now. Hopefully she doesn't get hit with a critical because that hurts. Let's see. Well, Cyber Kick can still take him down in one shot, so that's not a big deal. Yeah, Ziggy's uh, dexterity, which influences his ability to hit, is not great. Yeah, go after Ziggy, not after Momo. Momo will take way too much damage. <laughs> yeah, and these guys can focus their ether attack, which means they'll do a little more damage. But they also die pretty easily, even to Momo. Momo, of course, being, um, you know, kind of like a, a kid, is more suited to magic wielding as opposed to uh, the physical. So, yeah, don't, don't bother using her physical at any point. It's just weak. And we don't get a whole lot of uh, experience or anything else, but we do get a bunch of med kits for the humans. And so I will fight the rest of the ones that are right there, and then I will see you in a moment. Okay, those guys are taken care of. With that said, you'll want to head up here. Uh, make sure you've saved before coming up here, because that's not a good idea to have not saved at some point since, uh, you know, it's just not going to end well, as you can see. Eggs units. This sure doesn't look like a simple resurgence of an armed group. What should we do? I don't know. We won't be able to stay here much longer. A large number of soldiers are making their way over here. At this rate, this room will be filled with over a hundred soldiers in eight minutes. Oh, okay. reality is pretty handy. I think we need to get out of here somehow. I don't know how. But I guess we need Russian to go. Is out of the question. Even for you? Not even a cyborg can take on three eggs units. I'd be shot to pieces. Yeah, no doubt. What if the eggs units couldn't use their sensors? Well, it would probably help. But why? I can reduce their ability to some extent. How? The Hilbert effect. I thought that was Using the Gnosis thing. Using inverted Hilbert wavelengths, I can create cross interference that automatically shuts down the Eggs D Triple S enemy sensor system, 
That should take out most of their external sensors. The Hilbert effect? It's an anti-gnosis materialization system. Oh, okay, so system. it is the same one. Normally, it's spread out over a wide range via an amplifier installed on board a spacecraft. But I can create the effect by myself in small areas like this. Okay. That might work. All right, go ahead. Okay. I don't know what uh, right, reducing their sensors is going to do when, you know, they can use swords and beat the crap out of me, but okay. If that's the logic you need to use in order to make sense of things and allow me to get through this boss fight, then sure thing. Speaking of which, we have the nowhere effect. near time for that boss fight today. So this is our secret weapon against the Gnosis. I just figure I'd get a head start. Uh-oh. What was that? What happened? Hilbert waves! Somebody's using the Hilbert effect on us! My enemy sensor system has shut down! It's the 100 series! I can tell from the cross interference! Find her! She's close! You mentioned cross interference. Do you feel the effects too? I'm... fine. You don't look I'm fine. to have a much higher... Capacity than them. Rest a bit. I'll take care of this. I'm okay. I can still help out. My nano repair function's still operational. She's run by nano machines. Good, because we're gonna need her help. Now, the two green guys, and yes, we have to fight all three, are more blue guys, I guess they are now. But uh, they're the same guys that we fought that was uh, guarding the segment uh, decoder for uh, segment address 4. Yeah, that guy wasn't all that difficult because we kept putting him to sleep. And that's pretty much our same strategy here. So make sure you come in with full EP. And we're basically going to keep the other two uh, put to sleep. There's some strategy involved and I will get into that when we start up the next episode there. Because that's all the time I have for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.